Oh, hello again. Um, okay, this is the quick video guide to the eGov tour links. Okay, and this document's pasted up on the BLP, and really it's just a series of links to some sites, but they're ones that you may like to have a look at. Uh, and I'll call up a couple of examples for you. Um, and some of them which are quite useful, for example, are, um, include video clips, um, but others just sort of illustrate a couple of the things. And you may just want to watch this short video sequence, um, maybe give you a few useful ideas and um, give you a break from your conventional revision. Anyway, here we go. This first section looks at links which are kind of looking at kind of e-government and how government as an organisation can take advantage of technology. And um, so let's have a couple a look at a couple of these links if I call them up in a web browser. You of course can simply click on the links in the document. Okay, the first links to the Guardian, which has a special section on e-government. And this will give you a quick run through of various things, uh, they're all quite topical. We can see that MPs are struggling with um, IT within the Commons, for example. So it said, um, cancel the e-vote scheme amid security fears. So if you're thinking about looking at e-voting, for example, I've got some links into uh, Diebold for the American, a uh, good American example, but here's an assessment risk. Uh, you know, 70 problems, I was sorry, revealed problems in 70 e-voting pilots. Um, so you could have a quick look at that. Again, May the second, very topical. And you can go down and find that there are lots of different links here. Um, interesting things about e-petitions undermining democracy and various other things. But just have a look and see what suits you from here. But it's a good way to get a good collection of links. And, um, you know, just just have a look. It depends on what particular aspect that you're interested in. But a good starting point if you're looking for a, a couple of short, you know, concise, topical articles. And if you follow another of the links, it will likely take you through to the page for the Chief Information Officer Council and to the Transformational Government Implementation Plan. Okay, um, I seem to remember this is slightly out of date now, yeah, because the tasks are due to be completed by July 2007. Uh, but you, you've got links through to the plan, these are all in PDF documents and they usefully tell you how long they are. So some of these are quite big documents. Um, and there are links through to um, examples, for example. Um, in health and various other regions, lots of different examples. So if you're looking for some examples and stuff, this might be something useful for you to pull up. A useful site to have a look at is the Direct Gov site, uh, and this is actually the main portal now to government services. At one time, the government had, I think, over a thousand websites. You know, lots of different departments, central government, local authorities, um, were all doing their own web thing. And then people kind of realise, well, it's great having over a thousand websites. It sounds really impressive, but actually, where then is the average citizen? Where, where do you go to find the services? So the idea of a one-stop shop, a kind of single portal for more services to come up. And what they've, they've done is, and obviously you can have a look at this, is they kind of divide it straight into different areas. So this, the themes of education and learning, or home and community, uh, motoring, and they've kind of also developed into kind of different um, sort of uh, life things. So if, if for parents, for example, you know things like having a baby, childcare, you can get all your information. Uh, for people who are over 50s, if you're caring for somebody, whatever it happens to be, and again, you can you can uh, look at this. So it's divided into fairly many categories, and the searchable information as well. But that's an example of one of the main sort of government portals. And we've also got, um, you can go to the Down Street portal, number 10 has its own website. Tony Blair infamously said he knew very little about IT um, and, and issues around sort of computing and technology. Um, you know, but he's in a position to have lots of people do his work for him and sort out his emails for him and stuff. Um, but again, this is an, an example of, you know, kind of the government now using lots of, uh, using the web to give lots of data, up information, etc, etc. Um, so again, you could have a look on here if you wanted. Um, it's not unique, and the White House does it, and lots of other um, sort of governments will do it now. Uh, but it's you know it's an interesting example of how this kind of thing is done when at one time it wasn't done at all. And you can pull up various um, videos and stuff. And of course, as a video archive, I haven't had a look in it. Um, and of course, they have their own YouTube channel, which made quite a bit of fuss. So here we go with our themed YouTube channel. Anyway, you can see this on your own if you choose to do so. 
this section of clips here, uh, of links here, uh, deals more directly with um, e-voting. Okay, so it's quite useful to have a look at, and there's one in particular that's a YouTube clip that you'll find very useful if you're thinking of looking at it. Uh, but let me just f take you through to a couple of links that are worth looking at. Um, let's call it the, the techno right one first. A keyword to look for is die bold. Um, okay, it might be Diebold, but I, I always pronounce it Diebold. And these make some of the e-voting machines in the States which are, are, are particularly well known to be flawed. Okay, um, so let's have a look at a couple of these links. Okay, I've just called up the e-voting links into some different tabs within the web browser. Uh, the Technorati article, this is a well known site all to, to do with technology. Um, if you have a look on here, it will bring up various bits of information about Diebold and for example Florida Bands a touch screen da 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 um, it'll call up video clips and things so Fox News exposes um, oh a vote, re a vote reversal story um, and you can you can look there for lots of information so it's a great starting point if you want a quick bit of information about Diebold is a useful example um, Wikipedia always a good place to start of course lots of issues around security problems, uh, technical problems, there's link menos, there's all kinds of stuff, lots of further reading good place to go and have a look at that um, the Law Geek one I quite like um, I just came across this one while searching for it and they've got this fantastic video um, we'll see how long it takes to come up oh, oh it's saying it's downloaded, I'm sure it was running the other day, I, I won't do it now um, and basically it's a guy talk, um, from, from the company talking to some people in Texas and um, revealing some of the kind of problems that went on but if you want a really good look it's such a time here because there's a new movie come out called Hacking Democracy uh, which is a detailed look about the issues around problems to do with e-voting and, and, and the problems of not having paper trails so should we have a look at the official trailer let's, call, let's go play a video and let's see how it comes up Fingers crossed it comes up nice and quickly for us. Oh, I look silly. In front of the votes that it had subtracted. It says there's minus 16,022 votes. But that kind of subtraction. Anyway, you can look at this clip in detail at hackingdemocracy.com, which is one of the links you've got in there. Um, and this is a film that's newly out, okay, so that's the trailer for it. But what I've noticed as well is that if you go to YouTube, notice here Hacking Democracy 1 of 9, um, some naughty but kind person has basically captured lots of it, uh, probably all of it, broken it down America, in sections. The world's greatest democracy. Captain and at its heart, is. the vote, the will of the people. But how do you know if the vote is counted correctly? And if you don't know, then what have you got? Anyway, it goes on. This is really good. So if, you, if you're looking at this U of E voting, even if you just watch this one particular capture, uh, one particular section, um, it's good and gives you a good flavour of things. And have a look at the Hacking Democracy website you know and this is a really serious issue and you, you can, it's a very good American examples and you can link it to the UK examples or you can compare it to the UK examples that for example were linked in from the Guardian site okay um, and of course it's always nice for you to be able to just watch a few video clips by way of revision rather than doing standard revision and the last couple of links in that document uh, will take you through to some information about how politicians are using the web as a platform to get their information across. You can find lots and lots of links on this. I've just dug a couple out for you uh, that you might find interesting. Uh, one's an article from the BBC, um, and it's a recent article, and you can have a look, and really it's a case of comparing how the Democrats and the Republicans have used the, uh, the web in different ways. Okay, and you can have a look at that and hopefully you'll find it quite interesting. There's also a link into Presvid, uh, which is an interesting site because what it's done is it's looked at lots of clips from YouTube and how politicians during uh, the American campaign trail uh, have put things up. So there's lots of clips embedded in and there are lots of comments and stuff. So if this is your kind of area, the kind of thing you're interested in, if you're interested in looking at how politicians have used the web to present themselves and get their information across, uh, then this is a, a useful site to go and have a look at. You can see comments and clips, and again, it just gives you a break from standard revision.